The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with your humble host, me, David White, and uh, the koala bear of Wall Street. Uh, we are up uh, 14 points on the S&P cash. And uh, yeah, interestingly enough, uh, we have 1.75 billion shares. Uh, even this morning, uh, we had extremely light volume, first 30 minutes. I try to always tick off and see just how much energy there is in the open. Uh, normally, uh, we'll have five to 600 uh, million shares in the first 30 minutes, uh, even on a light day, maybe 475. Uh, we had uh, 350 million yesterday in the first 30 minutes. Uh, today, we had 300 million. Uh, yesterday when we started this show, uh, what were we, about 1.8, 1.85, uh, we're about a billion, uh, well, not a billion, uh, 100, well, yeah, 100 million, 1.74 billion as we start the show today. So uh, we are coming up on extremely light volume, and I actually went, after about noon, I started going back and seeing uh, if a market ever broke out uh, with such a light volume uh, and comparison volume uh, previously. And uh, I really couldn't find anything. Uh, normally, I look for uh, indications at 10, 15, 20 percent on an index, like the Qs or something like that. I like to see, I actually place trades when I see individual stocks have 50 percent lighter volume. Uh, one of the things that is problematic is to see an index come up on such a light volume over the last two days, uh, only to come up in what will probably be even a lighter volume tomorrow and see what's happening. But uh, we've had a few stocks that look like uh, they couldn't catch a bid and they're actually starting to move up just a little now. And uh, the question is just how long uh, and if this will last. Uh, but uh, no volume in the individual stocks to speak of at all. Uh, all the volume right now is being pushed, and this market is being pushed around uh, by buying uh, S&P futures, buying uh, actual uh, ETF indexes like uh, the Qs, uh, leaving the individual stocks only to move if uh, someone uh, at the ETF needs to uh, update their portfolio and add or subtract something. So uh, very, very, very light of volume as we start out today. And uh, we'll get more into that. But I almost feel a little bit like, uh, uh, what was his name, Shaw in Jaws, where he's looking at the, uh, he's looking at the, the uh, shark and saying, I've never seen a, a, a shark take three barrels down. Three barrels, never took three barrels down. Of course, he puts four barrels in the shark, and uh, he can no longer stay down. But uh, uh, very, very light volume is always a huge warning signal. A little light, maybe it'll flip a little. In fact, if I see 10% lighter volume or 10% uh, at the top or the bottom, uh, generally I'll say, okay, maybe there's a higher priority that this thing uh, comes back into the trading range, either at the top or the bottom, but uh, not something I would uh, put my money on. Uh, but when we see incredibly light volumes, uh, all the volume in ETFs that is really being pushed out there and almost no volume in the underlying stocks themselves, uh, it is very, very troublesome. Now we're going into, uh, yeah, Chief Brody. And uh, you have to uh, look at a, uh, a market that is extremely bristle. And uh, one of the things I would be watching for is fast-moving markets. Now, maybe I'm wrong in that fast-moving market is up, but normally uh, 98, 99% of the time, uh, those fast-moving markets are downside when you're at a high and the volumes are extremely low. Uh, today in history, in 1950, uh, Wells, uh, Henry Wells and uh, uh, William Fargo, 
uh, and John Butterfield meet in the uh, mansion house of in Buffalo to uh, join their separate companies, Wells Fargo's Livingston uh, and Butterfield and Watson into a single firm with monopoly over express shipping in the Northeast. They capitalized their American Express company with $150,000 in stock. At first, uh, Amex specializes in shipping small valuables like bond certificates, currency and financial contracts, uh, plus live poultry, pianos and firecrackers. So my uh, when it positively uh, needs to be there overnight, uh, it may have been next to a chicken at one point, but uh, it's probably years before I ever used American Express. Uh, but this day in 1950, uh, the uh, very, very fast freight company opens its doors. Of course, uh, we continue to see uh, markets move around the world and uh FTSE was up uh, six tenths, Germany up seven tenths, France up a percent, uh, and most of the other ones are up uh, somewhere around that in the eurozone. When we get to uh, Nikkei, they were up almost a percent, nine tenths. Uh, Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose half a percent, and China's Shanghai uh, Composite ticked up just a point one percent. Their um, real estate companies um, really getting smacked now. Uh, and uh, third day is up after a miserable move down for the Shanghai. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that also. Uh, anyway, you can always give me a call at 877-927-6648 if you'd like to. And uh, I think that's all the news I have, except uh, probably this bullseye on my back that says get shorty. Um, let's go ahead and get this. I had a, a question uh, that someone emailed me earlier, and uh, let's well, go ahead and find that. Uh, okay, and the question was uh, NSR. NSR. Uh, this company uh, does uh, a variety of things, but uh, uh, they are kind of like the corporate GoDaddy above. If you want to think about somebody above. GoDaddy that uh, basically hands out all the addresses for the Internet uh, to registrars like uh, uh, GoDaddy and other uh, Internet registrars that actually keep the information as to where each website is, uh, keeps your host information. Uh, Newstar actually a little different, and uh, I think I actually have. Maybe I can get it up here. I thought I had it. Uh, there it is. Uh, the question was about uh, the uh, gentleman, uh, Ron, getting into this as a starter company. What does it do, actually, and what does the news uh, today actually pretend? Uh, the, uh, this company is an Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. And besides keeping all the uh, regular uh, IP addresses for uh, the main uh, registrars across of the world and also uh, keeping uh, numbers from uh, at least the U.S. What they do is there are a ton of different protocols. Uh, if you look at actually uh, the whole Internet and Ethernet itself, uh, they basically built it in layers. There are seven layers of software uh, in Ethernet, and each one allows uh, – a huge uh, ability uh, for the network to uh, do different things. But there are a ton of what are known as uh, numbers uh, that actually tell you uh, what a uh, packet coming across uh, is going to be, what size it's going to be, uh, command codes. Uh, let's say that you're doing video. Uh, maybe you want to resend that video uh, packet several times. Uh, maybe you just want to drop that packet if it doesn't go through. And uh, so you see hiccups in video a lot of times, depending on what the command flags in those packets actually say. Uh, but there's all kinds of different numbers and ports uh, that computers can use to route uh, uh, Internet uh, packets around. There's error codes. Uh, there's a great deal of uh, all these uh, processing flags and numbers and everything else. And basically... As the Internet got built and still is, they put out these uh, requests for comments, and that's what you're going to see, these RFCs and everything else. And sometimes these things never get settled. 
Uh, everybody just kind of goes along. Uh, but usually there's at least some kind of document that says this is the way it should work. And uh, if you want to be sending audio and video around the net, this is the numbers and the uh, header needs to be like this. And whether you not to want to resend uh, is a, yet another command in all that. And it gets really in the weeds, but uh, uh, someone needs to be the uh, librarian for all this data. And uh, they are, and the news out today was that they are being picked by ICON, which is the, not the guy that is the, we see on CNBC uh, trying to pump up uh, Herbalife. But uh, this is a company that oversees the entire Internet. It's always been U.S. authority. And, of course, over the uh, uh, Friday night, uh, President Obama decided to give away uh, that uh, authority uh, to a uh, world group, kind of uh, uh, not something I particularly like, but uh, uh, the thought, I guess, was he was going to get some brownie points uh, to go up against the Russians, which didn't seem to buy him much, uh, since most people didn't want to do anything, eh, kind of like Hitler. They just wanted to let him go along and get along. But uh, this company is actually the benefit of keeping all these. Uh, the money is not all that great. So... To me, there would need to be something more out here. Uh, they're going to get a cut and get paid a certain amount of money. But uh, most of these companies that do this, is uh, it's uh, just there's not a lot of money in it. Let me put it that way. There are some. But uh, this isn't like building a new iPhone and this company is going to be 100 bucks one day. Most of these uh, companies just kind of limp along making uh, some decent money uh, on an uh, annual basis as they get paid. And uh, some of the new things this company does is okay, but um, I just don't know if there's a lot there uh, in these companies. Normally, they have to come up with something special, and uh, mostly it's just all this money flowing in uh, from uh, Internet companies, even if they are public uh, domain or in public interest, uh, and from governments. But uh, it's... Uh, Normally, it's not uh, inventing a new uh, mousetrap. It's just uh, keeping track of all the stuff and making sure that networks stay up. So uh, when we look at this company, uh, I think what he likes off this, and I can't blame him, is a wonderful uh, January 30th low that had 7.7 .7 million shares. With uh, That was at $33.19. Went below it, closed back above it, and the volume was very light. You're going to get a bounce out of this thing. What I dislike is that you're probably not going to get any more than 37 to 38 bucks out of this thing, maybe 39 if you're lucky, and uh, not a bad place to buy it. And, of course, you have made a bottom. What you haven't done, though, is fill this gap out here uh, where this thing has come down. And uh, uh, to me, if the market turns against you, you've got some big problems, uh, and you're probably not going to make a lot of money on the upside. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, we've got a caller. We're going to come back to him in just a minute. And that's Victor from Paramus, New Jersey. Uh, we'll be looking at that uh, when we come back. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. 
Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And a little discussion in the den about uh, what Hackaday was. Uh, it's hack a day one word dot com. You can go check them out. But it's uh, it's kind of people like uh, uh, used to be the ham operators that are always uh, taking things apart, uh, making different things out of them. Uh, here's the thing to make uh, wood pellets for your uh, stove, uh, listening devices, uh, handheld. Uh, Tetris machines. Uh, if you can think of uh, some way to bastardize some old piece of uh, electronics that's probably not in use anymore, uh, not a, a big deal out here. Well, we've got Victor. I guess he's back now. Uh, how you doing today, Victor? Good. Do you see any butterflies for Twitter or anything? Uh, on, on what time? On what time frame? Sitting a big volume day with lighter volume. Are you going to bounce or bounce down? Uh, well, I mean, you're going against 64 million shares. I think uh, probably going to find some support. I would think more than anything, since this is a recent IPO, that you're probably mm -hmm. going to find at least uh, if this thing uh, is probably not going to go down any further. My guess is that you'd have the underwriters step in at around 50 bucks. And when's uh, the lock see. Expire? huh? When's the lockup expire? Uh, let's see. The first day out here would be eleven seven. So give it six months. So it would be five seven May seventh. Mm -hmm. But then what happens then? Uh, then you're going to have a lot of those shares. Now I haven't gone and researched it, but default is going to be six months on it. So you know I'll, I'll I'll probably look at this a little closer. But normally I there's some websites I track out there that have when these lockup dates come up and. I'll look at it, but I haven't seen anything uh, that talks about it soon. But normally what you're going to find out is that uh, uh, the underwriters on this are going to try to keep that stock up. 
uh, at least through that uh, lockup period where they could sell too. And uh, there's just the, probably the big problem with uh, Twitter out here is there's just not a lot of people uh, pushing the stock or the company, and uh, a lot of people are now kind of scratching their heads saying, how are these people going to make money? Uh, the question is, does it do a swan dive like uh, Facebook and then finally start making money and then come back up? And I think that's been the biggest problem. But uh, you know, getting down here in fairly decent support uh, right off of that high where it came public uh, on uh, November 7th. So uh, I don't think you're going to – I wouldn't think that there's a lot of downside. Are you thinking about buying this? Yeah, just short term. Uh, you know, could it be in a trading range up to 58 bucks? Uh, I think it could be. I have a feeling more that this thing's probably going to bounce around between maybe 50 and 55, though. I don't see a lot of juice in this thing yet. Um, a lot of light volume, which you like. Uh, but that's the biggest problem is these guys got to come out and say, hey, this is how we're going to make money. You know what earnings state is on this? No. Uh, let's take a quick look at it. Okay, April 21st. Mm -hmm. So you got about three weeks, four weeks uh, before earnings, and that's probably another thing that's going to hold this up. But uh, the problem is you don't know what they're going to say on those earnings, and there's no real history to come back. And I think this is the first time since they've been public that they will issue earnings and guidance. And uh, until you get that, this thing's probably going to be wild. Uh, but uh, I'm, to me, th this thing says... Right now, maybe 50 to 55, but not a whole lot higher, not a whole lot lower. And you're going to have people step in that are underwriters probably uh, to hold this up until that earnings state. So if there was a stock that probably wasn't going to move a great deal, uh, this would probably be one until April 21st. So I don't see a lot in it either way or up or down. And, of course, not long, hadn't been out long enough that you can sell like a, a, a spread on this thing. If, it would, if this thing had been out a few years, I probably would sell a spread on this thing and uh, just figure it was going to stay between 50 and 55. Okay? I guess uh, he's dropped off again. Yep. It is Victor from Paramus, New Jersey. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're going to start seeing some of these stocks start pulling up earnings again in about four weeks. It just seems like we're done with one earnings cycle and we get right into another one. But a lot of these uh, fairly newer uh, IPOs uh, came, are coming out and have their earnings cycle uh, off of the S&P 500, which is just fine by me. Uh, you get a little bit better chance. Anyway, uh, you can email me at path at tfnn. Dot com and I'll be glad to answer your question uh, like I did Ron from Maryland on uh, NSR, interesting site. Another great site, Instructables. If you haven't seen that site, I'll be back in just a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Ah, yes. The Rocker Files. Someone was talking in the uh, den about Kevin Mitnick. Uh, if you don't know the name, he's uh, one of the... Uh, more famous uh, hackers. Uh, he was uh, basically the FBI wanted him as a poster child for what they do to you if you were a uh, black hack, hat uh, hacker. Uh, and uh, probably the worst thing about uh, especially the FBI and the Justice Department is uh, they'll just outright lie if they do want you. Uh, not that he didn't do illegal things, but uh, uh, they would say that, uh, you know, if he bought a, uh, or if he uh, looked at code on AT&T's website, uh, that he stole $150 million worth of uh, uh, software if he downloaded it or something. It was just ridiculous stuff. And, of course, most of these judges, even back in the 90s when he got caught, uh, he, they didn't know anything about computers. And, of course, uh, all they hear is uh, all kinds of people telling everybody uh, just how evil this guy is and that he can start a nuclear war because uh, someone saw a movie like that. Just a lot of stuff that's uh, not true. Uh, he was uh, treated rather badly. And uh, he kind of turned his right life around now. He runs his own security company. But uh, at one time, he was uh, America's number one hated hacker. And, uh, but uh, rather famous for uh, uh, being always caller number seven when they were giving away a new car or something like that. He would uh, figured out a way to game just about everything. 
and uh, escaped more than once. <laughs> but uh, did his time uh, out now. Uh, actually spends a lot of time with uh, foreign governments. Last time I spoke to him on the phone, he was in Ecuador. And uh, we just happen to share a love of uh, the Rockford Files and uh, talk about it many times. Anyway, uh, we've got a interesting day setting up here. And uh, you know, we're going to look at some of the stocks that were moving, but uh, for the most part, you didn't have a whole lot. Uh, eBay, uh, you got a little movement out of it here today. Uh, that's uh, basically... Uh, Carl Icahn, once again out here jawboning the stock up. Um, HBQ, oh, Hewlett Packard doing rather well, up 3% today, but it is up uh, to a previous high. So we're seeing a few more of these stocks challenge those highs. The last time it was up here was uh, February 21st at $30.71, 29 million shares. What you don't like about that today, 13.5 million shares. Uh, other stocks of interest, uh, FLR, and uh, this is Fleur, Fleur. Uh, same volume as the previous low, but it is bouncing out of here on light volume. So you've got this, be a little suspect on that one, MBT, MBT. Uh, this one uh, did report today, uh, mobile telesystems up, man, not huge volume, uh, actually back into a gap that had huge volume down on uh, the 3rd of uh, March. Uh, Core's off a little bit today. K, K, was it uh, K-O-R-S? There we go. Uh, basically a downgrade from Barclays on this thing, but it had been going sideways for a great while. This thing needs to come back into probably about the $85, $83 level uh, to get me interested, but one of the stronger stocks out here and one of the few that's uh, getting pushed down fairly extensively. Uh, but uh, what you see here is a great example of uh, distribution at highs. This thing has gone sideways for, what, 20, 25 trading days, uh, not breaking out, probably a fairly good indication. Uh, this thing, when it breaks, is probably going to come down with some energy out here. Uh, NEM, everybody likes gold, except on a day like this, where gold has pulled back a little. Uh, this thing's been off about a uh, percent and a half. Uh, this actually did hit uh, a high with kind of decent volume. Uh, actually had uh, 15 million shares on the 14th going into uh, the January 24th high that had 10 million shares. So probably going to get uh, that area tested yet again, but probably the big one of the biggest dogs in all of uh, gold. Uh, MHFI. Uh, of course, another one. Oh, uh, reaffirm guidance. Uh, and gave some long-term outlook, uh, and it doesn't look like this thing's doing anything either. Um, did test a high on a little bit better volume, but rolled right back under. Of course, uh, all these uh, companies that uh, are in Russia, especially the Internet companies, are rocking now that uh, uh, we've outlined exactly what the problems are going to be going forward, which are about none for annexing uh, Crimea. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, yeah, you could almost make a case that this is uh, maybe the third ABC leg down in some of these companies. I don't know. Maybe something more is coming out here. But um, so far, not a lot of juice back up off these lows. Uh, but Yandex, YNDX, uh, been pretty much beaten since uh, this whole thing started February 18th. It was $41.35. And, of course, just a couple of days ago, $28.00. And uh, 65 cents. Now a nice bounce out of here, about four bucks. Uh, but you'd like this thing to probably consolidate for a while. And the uh, way Putin's acting, I don't think I'd want to own it at all. Uh, ta -ta -ta. What else do we have? SDS. And uh, boy, this one's up strongly today. Beat on EPS by two cents, reported in line revenues. And uh, had a fairly short, uh, high short interest rate, uh, uh, short, uh, uh, short interest. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
it is back up, may have enough of volume to go against this horrible day it had back on the 17th of December uh, that started the move all the way down to 101 uh, and 41 cents on February 3rd. Uh, nice juice out here. Uh, the question is, just all these people uh, hoping to get their cash back and will be able to claw through there fairly quickly? Usually the answer is no. Uh, EDU, another one of these for-profit educational companies, up fairly strongly, a little bit better volume than last few days, but uh, could be just making an ABC on the way down when you look at it. And, of course, uh, what do we have for expansions? Uh, yeah, we've retraced uh, 45% so far. Uh, nice little gap back out of here, but uh, now coming into these huge volume down days of uh, the 26th and 27th of February. So uh, going to be some tough sledding for some of those companies, too. Uh, we were um, uh, in a DAQ. We actually brought uh, NDAQ up uh, in the uh, webinar we did a week ago Tuesday. Um, with uh, Tom O'Brien, and we were saying that uh, even though this was lighter volume, uh, it was interesting. One of these companies that not doing so well today, uh, Reuters uh, discussed uh, New York's plans of probing the high-frequency trading operation at uh, NDAQ and uh, putting a little pressure at least on this one stock out here. But it did uh, go above the previous high of December 2nd that, that was at $40.64 with 1.6 million shares. Uh, and it did that on March 7th with 1.3 million shares. And uh, that's about all you need to know. But certainly uh, energy was kind of uh, petering out here at these highs. And that's most of the stocks uh, that have been moving today. Again, you can email me at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to talk about your particular stock. Uh, and we've got, uh, uh, I think we've got somebody else here. So uh, hang on just a second. And let's see. Da -da -da -da. I should have this up. And I don't. Do I have it? Uh, yeah, I have it. I got mail. Yay! I got mail. Yay! Yes, I have mail. Harry in Virginia says a Boyd Gaming BYD wants to take a look at it. Uh, he doesn't say if it's long or short, uh, but uh, boy, you've got uh, decent volume back up the highs. Uh, you've got a high volume day down uh, from uh, October 31st uh, that had 15 million shares. You busted up through it with 18 million shares. So I see that you're probably going to see support somewhere around this uh, $12.50, 1275 area, maybe 13 bucks at a high. And if this thing could pull back to that area, probably uh, wouldn't be a bad chance of actually buying this thing back on the pullback at about 13 bucks uh, if that's what you wanted. And the market uh, decided to stay higher. But uh, we'll take a look at it. Um, Microsoft also a mover out here today, uh, MSFT, and uh, the news on this is that they are finally going to launch uh, Windows Office uh, for the iPad, um, and uh, eh, I'm probably a little over uh, done on this. I don't think it's going to make that much business, but uh, a lot of people have been shorting app or shorting uh, Microsoft over the last. Uh, week or so, and uh, I think uh, for years to come, uh, App, uh, Microsoft probably in an upgrade cycle from all those Windows XP owners, and not a stock I'd probably be shorting first. What we do want to watch is this thing's already got a 46 million shares today. It's going through its 51 million share high, and uh, my guess is it's probably going to get that 51 million shares and buck a lot of people off of it. So uh, uh, taking a look at that one. Yeah, let's see what else we have going on here. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to take a quick look and see what else. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, 13. Yeah, let's see how some of the recent tests that I've been looking at are faring today. I've uh, been looking at the Cephide CPHD. This thing's been up here at the top. Fairly light volume. Uh, maybe there's some news on it. Um, another one I've been watching in the tech sector has been EMC. 
Uh, this thing actually may be one of the few uh, out here that is uh, hitting at previous highs a little stronger uh, volume. Um, you needed 42 million shares from July 24th of uh, 2013, 27.38. It's over that now, and you had 23 million shares, and today 12 million shares. So probably look for this thing to close back below that 27.34 as confirmation of a top. Uh, uh, another one that uh, a lot of people are talking about lately is Palo Alto Networks really being pumped uh, hard on CNBC by some of their traders and fast money. Uh, this one's right up here at highs. Um, now, it had fairly decent volume on the uh, 7th, uh, but uh, that is also um, not testing that high. Now that the last two days, uh, we need 3.8 million shares as we get into that uh, high of February 24th. Uh, yesterday, 2.2, 2.3 million shares. Today, about a million shares. So um, as we approach these highs again, uh, maybe we get some kind of juice uh, uh, off of the FOMC meeting, uh, but we've got to be watching that as the key out here to figure out uh, whether or not uh, what we're getting is just a little bit of market gas and a bounce today. Uh, but, uh, I mean, we're just now, we still haven't, what, the show's got, what, 13 minutes left. So with an hour left, an hour and 15 minutes left to go uh, in the trading day, we have not turned 2 billion shares. And uh, that probably is even going to say less for today. Yesterday, we ended up with 2.7 billion shares. Uh, today, about 2.5 billion shares. And to break out through these highs, I'm looking for something like 4.8 to 5.5 billion shares uh, as we go through that. So uh, just keep an eye on that volume over the last few days. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, uh, anybody talking about this? Stuff? You know, there's about six, uh, somebody in the den just posted something, and I've kind of avoided getting into this, but uh, there's been a plague of stockbrokers, especially in New York, uh, that have been committing suicide. And... Uh, my guess is just the immense amount of, of pressure in those businesses that they put on uh, put on those folks. Uh, the only place it's duplicated for uh, the amount of people committing suicide are uh, people uh, trying to get perfect grades in college, uh, especially a lot of uh, kids that uh, have intense pressure from their parents to perform. Uh, I think uh, just being able to uh, come up a little short is all it takes for a lot of these folks that are working 80, 85 hours a week. Uh, Dennis uh, and uh, uh, cops have a high uh, suicide rate. Um, and it is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, they work in a small area. Uh, just a lot of, yeah, very stressful. And uh, I don't think that there's anything new to it. Uh, I think maybe we're just seeing a cluster out here. Uh, but uh, everybody's trying to, of course, beat everybody else out. And uh, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, trading or high-stress jobs like cops. Uh, it, is, uh, it is problematic. We'll be back in a minute. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery in pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Join Andy Hecht as he teaches you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. And as we come back, a uh, very interesting uh, day out here. It's uh, got uh, We have just that very, very light volume. Looks like we're all waiting to find out whether or not... Uh, the Fed is going to turn back on that IV drip of morphine. Uh, my belief is that they will not. And uh, this is probably one of the lightest of volume short squeezes for a market that I've seen. Uh, I'll always remember one of the uh, big moves I saw in Ryland Homes. And it had to be maybe 2002 or three, maybe 2004, somewhere in that time frame. I wish I could find it, but it's split and it been readjusted so many times. Uh, but I remember uh, the stock was trading something like million, a million and a half shares a day, uh, most of the days. And uh, the, the stock went from about $70 early in the day uh, to about 80 bucks on 120,000 shares. And uh, within the last 15 minutes of the trading day, it was back down to 70 bucks. And uh, fell apart from there. It was a matter of a few days, back to about 55. Um, I had shorted like 100 shares at about 72 bucks, and watched this thing just creep higher, higher, and higher. Uh, so as soon as I tried to start shorting it, uh, about 78 or 79 bucks, they did everything in the world. This is back when stocks traded in eights. You couldn't uh, just short a penny, and there was an uptick rule to try to keep you out. And, of course, um, I had to place orders all along the way from about 78 bucks uh, and higher at uh, uh, basically 50 shares 
20 shares to get any way in, um, especially back then the uh, uh, the market makers for a stock on the NYSE uh, were vicious. And uh, But by the end of the day, I was paid back. Now, this is just a very interesting market to me. Um, I think right now uh, the, the short side has a uh, full house. And there's only a couple of, house, uh, a couple of hands that built uh, that can uh, uh, beat that right now. One would be the Fed stepping in and saying, hey, we're going to just turn that fire hose of cash back on. Uh, but to me, that's probably unlikely. Uh, probably a lot of people just hoping for it. Of course, this probably means another $10 billion uh, less uh, this meeting uh, and uh, what I'm going to bet on. But uh, extremely light volume, pushes back up into the highs. Um, every time I've been severely challenged uh, by a market or by a stock uh, on the short side, it has been one of the most painful things to sit through. Uh, but the most profitable when they do crack and break. And uh, like I said, I, I, there's only one hand that can really beat us, and that's the uh, Fed deciding to throw away everything they've talked about and uh, go after uh, unrestrained QE. I think maybe the new head might do it, but uh, there's three new votes uh, now in the Fed. Those are all decidedly hawkish people. And uh, my guess is she will not be able to sway those folks, at least at, uh, during this meeting, uh, to go whole hog into uh, stopping uh, the taper or changing the language in the taper. Uh, my guess is that we'll probably go into May before uh, her rubber stamp, I wouldn't say rubber stamp, her stencil is on the Fed and for the most part still living through a legacy where uh, last fall, they started talking severely about the tapering process, but uh, uh, $10 billion, probably not all that big. A lot of this movement, I suspect, in the last few weeks is a flight to quality, but uh, that flight, uh, especially a lot of larger stocks, being hit with, uh... oh, I see uh, Andy. I see the fin. He's coming toward me. Hang on for Andy Heck. It'd be interesting to hear what he has to talk about today. See you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. So when you can, not when you have to. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.